visit our dear friend, the hippopotamus of Biffle's Hook Dam, because Tina wanted to know if the hippo had found a girlfriend during the day. But Tina, if you are still watching, as you can see, unfortunately, no, was it Tina or was it, it was Tina, hey, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it was, I'm not making that. For a minute, I started doubting myself there. Just double checking. But you can see, unfortunately, no other hippos in the dam for you. He's got some friends though. There's a blacksmith lapwing, or Mr. and Mrs. Blacksmith lapwing, just sitting on that side of the dam, right, just over there. There they are. Not up to too much, just doing a quick afternoon preen, and why not in the lovely afternoon sun, of course, it'd be nice. But they aren't just the two of them. There was a dove that had also come down for a drink, but I see it has now flown away. And they're not making noise for a change. I'm sure the hippo is feeling quite happy about that, that the blacksmith lapwings are not I can't call what they, the sound that they make a cackle. That's not the right noise. I don't know how to describe the sound of a blacksmith lapping. Obviously, they reckon that it sounds like uh, somebody striking metal. That's where they get their names from, the blacksmith striking metal. But how would you describe that, Sebastian? What, would you, what word would you use to say when the racket that is produced by a blacksmith lapping? Megan and Alice, feel free to chime in at any time. Let's just watch this hippo. I think. He started mouthing the water for a moment. I wonder if he's going to perhaps open his mouth for us. He looks like he's slowly starting to wake up because when we saw him this morning, he didn't even have his eyes open. Do you remember that? He was fast asleep. He still looks a little bit on the tired side. Maybe he's going to do a, a roll underneath the water. Let's see if he creates some big waves. Yes, there we go. No? Oh, I thought we were going to see a foot pop out of the water. That's one of my favorite things is when they do roll around. Perhaps we'll go and try and find some uh, some hippos at Chitwa Dam. Maybe we'll go and do that actually and spend the afternoon with a pod. Maybe we get some action. But you see how he keeps mouthing the water. Now typically when they start doing that, they normally open their mouths and stretch open their jaws. Let's see if he's going to do that because he looks like an impressive bull. Yes. Good hippopotamus. Isn't that cool? You know what, nature's so great when when the animals um, sort of use your cue and then they open their mouths, but this is the time that they start to get active, so you can expect a lot of mouth opening. Typically that's a threat display. I don't think he's particularly bothered, bothered with us. He hasn't snorted or grunted at us once since we've been here. I think he's just starting to move around now. And maybe he knows that it's a Friday afternoon and he's going to put his dancing shoes on. Maybe he's going to do that. He's going to go and find himself a date, I reckon. Where did he go now though? Should we, I was going to say, should we time and see how long he stays under the water for? But hopefully he doesn't stay under the water for a whole, for a whole six minutes. Come on, another one for us, big man. Now, Wendy, you're wondering if it's normal for hippos to be alone? Because we see this hippo in Bivolzog Dam all by himself quite often. Yes, it is. So this is just a young bull. He's actually got a very nice spot here. He's got lots of grazing around him. He's obviously got the entire... Do you think he's hitting on me, Sebastian? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he keeps... feels like this hippo's staring straight at me. <laughs> and of course he's not. Um, but sorry, Wendy. So it's no, it's not uncommon, especially in, in smaller dams like this. Though Bivols of Dam is not particularly small. It's drying up fairly quickly now. Uh, I reckon, though, uh, you can expect to find a female in the dam with him at any point. At, at, at one stage, there were two males and two females in here. Actually, there were three females. There were actually five hippos at one point. But they've all obviously moved on to other areas. And that's okay. He's fine with that. You know, the females are more sociable than the males. The bulls are just responsible for looking after all the girls and the calves. And then, of course, mating with them. How's that? That rolled around under the water, big yawn, and, I, and he made a, a bit of a racket too. And now he's going back to sleep. <laughs> oh, Beard, you said that he's showing us who owns this pond. I think that's exactly what happens. And perhaps he took offense to my comment this morning when I said that he was lazy and he's not particularly interesting and maybe he was offended by the fact that I didn't spend too much time with him. Well, I'm making up for it now. I'm spending the whole afternoon here, but I'm going to go and visit 
maybe they're not your friends, but the other hippos of Chitwa Dam, because I quite like looking at those little ones. There's two little hippos in that dam, which are so funny to watch. I really want to catch this, this gentleman here though, even the hippos of Chitwa Dam exiting the water. But I don't know, we'd have to hide away because they're obviously quite shy when they leave the water. They're very vulnerable when they come out onto land, so sometimes they're not willing to do so. We'll see if he if he's going to give us one more sort of grunt or perhaps he's going to open his mouth for us. And then we'll start making our way around. But now again, he looks like he's just gone back to sleep again. He's not ready to get out of bed. I don't blame you. <laughs> Jeremiah, you've said maybe he's asking me to swim. Oh, drats. I didn't bring my my swimming costume with me. Oh, how unfortunate is that? Oh, you know, sorry hippopotamus, next time. <laughs> no, I don't think I'll be joining this hippo for a swim. Well, if you wanted him to splash around and make a bit of noise, me just standing on the edge of the water would cause him to do that, but then I'd have to be quick enough to get out of the way because I'm sure he'd come charging at me. I don't think he would take too uh, likely to me approaching his territory. Remember, the hippos don't just have territories in the water, but they also have territories out on land. We sort of look at it as a figure of eight. What have you spotted? Have you spotted another bird? No. There is actually, there's a dove to the left of Mr. Blacksmith Lapwing, the one that's to the furthest. There's a little dove that's come down for a drink. We can have a look at it. A little bit more to the left. If you keep panning, you'll eventually spot it. There it is. Ah! 